This conference will now be recorded.
Uh, hi everyone. Thank you for attend taking your time and attend the webinar. So my name is Boon from Yumo. Today's Tomo webinar, the main presentation will be presented by Kisino by Richard Lee. But before we start the webinar, I would like to let you know that if you have any questions uh, throughout the for any presenters of the, today's webinar, you can go to this website, pigeonhole.at, and enter the passcode TM Kisino to ask any question that you have. So the question will be shown later uh, during the Q&A session, which, is, which will be around half an hour later. All right, so before we, we move on to the main presentation, which is Kisino, I would like to first do a simple introduction of Yumo, what we do, and then I'll pass on the presentation to uh, PUB Singapore Water Exchange, who are our supporter for this webinar. So Yumo, we are a clean tech transfer consultancy based in Shanghai. We have office in Canada, Singapore, and also Germany. So since 2015, Hey, sorry, since 2014, we have uh, collected a database of 3,000 plus uh, Chinese company, and we have match made over 500 plus over, uh, global clean tech companies and did a matchmaking of over 500 plus, uh, which means that we have uh, did matchmaking between the global clean tech companies to the Chinese company. So our goal of uh, clean tech is actually to simplify the deals. Uh, by providing the services, which is which are shown on the slides, so, and we hope that by providing this service, we can connect the supply of the global clean tech to the demand of the China market. So this webinar is also supported by the China Innovations Challenge, who uh, which is organized by the China Science and Technology Department. So if you have any problem statements that and you're looking for a solution for China, or you want to provide your solution to China, you can let me know by contacting me uh, at uh, the email under Yumo Singapore, or you can just uh, email me or contact me later during the chat, uh, during the webinar. So now uh, I'll move, I'll let PUB to take on, uh, to continue their presentation. Uh, hi, uh, good afternoon or good evening uh, to everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Han Long. I'm the Senior Assistant Director of uh, uh, PUB from the Industry and Technology Collaboration Department. Uh, today, my topic is on collaborating with uh, the industry for water innovation. So what does uh, PUB does? PUB is the National Water Agency of Singapore. We manage the whole uh, entire water loop in Singapore. From the time it rains, we collect it in our uh, drains and reservoirs, treat it in uh, our waterworks. We supplied the water to the population and the industry, and then we collect back the used water uh, in a separate system. Uh, then we treat the used water and we reclaim it uh, to new water and supply to the industry directly for non-portable use. Uh, at the same time, a little of this new water is uh, uh, being sent to the reservoir to top up, especially during the dry season. We also desalinate uh, water from the sea and we send the desalinated water directly to the population and the industry. In short, we supply good water, we reclaim used water, and we tame storm water. Then, the national challenge of Singapore is definitely about um, uh, planning a water uh, uh, for uh, the future itself. So uh, doubling the water demand with an industry uh, account use of 70%, as well as competing land use for water infrastructure. Uh, for in the future, we also experience extreme weather, uh, more floods and droughts, 
dry seasons and also rising expectations, public expectations. In short, our Singapore's water future is about reuse of water and to desalinate water. But at the cost of uh, four times the energy if we do it business as usual. So PUB strategy for long-term sustainability of our water supply is to leverage on technology innovation to overcome challenges itself. And it aims to reduce the energy consumption, chemical usage, reliance on manpower and waste generation to improve our water quality for our customer. We are guided by a comprehensive technology roadmap in the nine key domains. Water treatment, desalination and reuse. Use water treatment process for resource recovery. Sensors and analytics industrial water technologies, groundwater or underground caverns, automation robotics, water distribution, decentralized water technology treatments, as well as watershed management. The outcome will be to have feasible and economical viable water solutions. We form this big, hairy, or just audacious goal which is to desalinate seawater at less than one kilowatt hour energy per meter cube at system level by the year 2050. Achieve energy neutrality for used water treatment. Analyze water quality in real time as well as save 25 million meter cube of water per day from the industry. And we have to leverage on R&D and innovation to achieve these goals. In terms of desalination, we have the low energy desalination research roadmap. Currently, all desalination systems are at about 3.5 kilowatt uh, hour per, per meter cube of uh, seawater desalination of desalinated. So in short terms, we are looking at 1.5 kilowatt hour per cubic meter at system level through various processes such as Verbal sanity processes, electrochemical desorting, blue energy via pressure retarded osmosis, and reverse electrodialysis. And Kisaino is one of our partners in, in this journey of uh, blue energy. In the long term, we are looking at less than one kilowatt hour per cubic meter. And such, such difficult goals could only be realized in a breakthrough R&D, such as creating biomimetic membranes and biomimicry of the nature in how uh, the nature de uh, dissolved uh, 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 the seawater. Next, I'll touch on the energy neutral use water treatment research roadmap. Currently, we are at about 25% uh, uh, of uh, production of energy in the plant itself. And in the short to mid terms, you're looking at 75 to 85%. And this can be realized through biosorption, low energy membrane bioreactor, as well as sludge preconditioning. And in the long term, we hope with uh, anaerobic membrane bioreactor and the mainstream NMOX, we could achieve 100% uh, uh, energy production that will create our energy neutral plants. Next, I'll touch on the real time water quality analysis. In a short term goal, we are looking at improving our detection of microbial contaminants uh, uh, three times the speed of current uh, detection times. Our long term goal is really to have a real time detection of other contaminants with acute toxicity. So what are the acute parameters we are looking at? We uh, range from protozo, bacteria, virus to toxin. And uh, the estab current established methods are taking a fair bit of time to detect such uh, uh, acute parameters. But our R&D achievement to date, we have shortened it from three 
to five hours uh, uh, in, in, in the lab itself. And the next step will be able, uh, the next step is really to talk about how do we put it into real time. Next, I'd like to talk about a smart POB roadmap. A smart POB roadmap enables us to operate with a linear workforce, enhance system uh, oversight and situation awareness with data-driven decision support. And most importantly, it improves service delivery to the client itself. And the five key areas we are talking about this uh, smart POV are Internet of Things, Autonomous Systems, Artificial Intelligence, Data Analytics, and Digital Twin. So how do we conduct our R&D itself? We have various uh, requests for proposal uh, as we call out a uh, uh, different art, uh, uh, research grant calls. And these grant calls are supported by the government through the National Research Foundations. Five grant calls has already been uh, called out in the past. And the latest uh, grant call that we'll be calling out uh, in quarter four this year will be uh, uh, will be also be determined after our tech roadmap complete its review. Next, I'd like to talk about accelerating commercializations of water technology through the Singapore Water Exchange. The Singapore Water Exchange is part of PUB's Water Hub, a center of water excellence, and it aims to accelerate uh, water technology through both innovations and business components uh, in, the, in this center itself. Beside these centers, we have the Singapore Water Academy for, for learning, as well as our PUB's operations uh, in the whole compound itself. So we aim to create these ecosystems that supports commercializations from the local and overseas SMEs, which include Kisino, we also have incubators and accelerators such as Imagine H2O, markets uh, advisory such as Aus Utility and UMO, and associations. Uh, more importantly, we also have consultants as well as global uh, tech companies such as Seiler and Muller. And with this ecosystem, this could increase a good network between the companies expose them with various uh, opportunities for collaborations and accelerate uh, technology deployments in the region. What Singapore Water Exchange also provides is various uh, activities that brings our companies to reach out to the market. So we have various visitors from the region, including Brunei, Saudi Arabia, that comes in uh, uh, to visit PUB and in their visit program, they will be introduced to our uh, water companies and vice versa. Our company will be able to understand their water challenges itself. We also set up a network of investors from Tamasic, ABC Wars, uh, to various funds itself and accelerators to foster a good discussion on investing uh, and in helping companies to solicit pre-commercialization uh, pre uh, uh, funding, uh, Series A, Series B funding itself. And in terms of he helping companies to establish its footprint in Singapore, we link our companies to a, a suite of corporate services from accounting to, to tele uh, IT services and, for, and to marketing as well as human resource services. Next, we'll talk a little bit about activities. There's three key activities that we organize at the Singapore Water Exchange. From the business part of, uh, of things, we have various uh, talks and programs with end users as well as the, as well as the overseas uh, in industries to network and to bring business opportunity into uh, Singapore itself. And for at a technical level, we also hold various technical seminars with you more, with the other uh, uh, stakeholders to bring best practices and, and uh, showcase our innovations as well as our tenants to the industry itself. And lastly, 
we create a fair bit of uh, social activities that strengthen the bonding between our tenants and the water industries. Upcoming, uh, we will have various uh, events that ha happens at uh, Singapore Water Exchange, including the Imagine H Draw Asia Water Innovation Week and visits by various utilities and uh, trade agency itself. So I thank you for your time to listen to me and I hoped you could uh, follow us on our Singapore Water Exchange linking page. The QR code is attached. Uh, do, uh, uh, do join us at this uh, site, which we will definitely be sharing more information about the activities and the things that we do. Thank you very much. All right, uh, thank you Han Long from PUB. So right now we'll move on to uh, Kisino, uh, which will be presented by the BP and Chief Scientist of Kisino, uh, Richard Lee. Hello everyone, can you hear me? Uh, Richard, you may share your screen now uh, so that we can see your slides. Can you see that? All right, now we can see Richard's slides. Okay, hi, hi, good day, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Richard Lee from KC Now. Uh, first, thank you very much for uh, you all uh, gave us such a great opportunity to introduce ourselves, our technology to, to all of you and uh, Secondly, I also have to, I also, uh, thanks to POB, to Han Long, gave uh, a very uh, nice introduction. And actually POB not only giving us a home, you know, our office uh, sit in POB uh, building, uh, but also uh, provide us opportunities, work together with uh, new technology as uh, industrial partner, like uh, uh, just Han Long mentioned, uh, uh, blue energy uh, uh, program. So, so today uh, the topic, uh, my topic is uh, uh, to introduce a new technology, uh, a new, uh, new uh, engineering solutions to uh, wastewater treatment industry. Okay, <clears throat> this uh, so uh, this technology we call uh, so so Kisi now uh, gave a name. We call that E cast. So E stands for enhanced. So it is enhanced cyclic activity sludge technology. Uh, can see from the name, it is uh, still you know biological treatment process. Uh, so, but with optimization. That's, uh, so uh, I will let you know you know how how do I how do we uh, enhance this uh, technology. So we enhance con conventional biological treatment process from four aspects. So here you can see uh, the first one is uh, uh, aerating process. We enhance the aerating. And the second one is uh, settling, sludge settling process. So we, you know, how you later you will see how can we enhance this settling process. Another one is uh, enhanced circulating process. How do we circulate uh, active sludge? And then the last one is uh, enhanced uh, dissolved oxygen control uh, process. So with this four, actually, uh, you know, we cover all of the whole loop of wastewater treatment. So the first one is, uh, uh, enhanced aerating technology. So this uh, slide shows you a comparison between uh, conventional and uh, uh, our new technology. So this part, this part is a conventional. I think everybody you are very familiar with is a, a diffuser, disc type of diffuser. From this, uh, uh, from this screen. I think you you have uh, you. It's very clear that you can see 
uh, you know, in the on the bottom of the uh, oxygen tank, you can see they have many, many area. They're still empty. They're still, you know, not occupied by uh, disc uh, diffusers. So, yeah, in other words, those empty area, it's difficult for, for, for the diffused air bubble rich microorganisms over there. And uh, so, so this part, this is the new aerating uh, technology we are going to introduce to you. You can see this is a tube. We call flexible tube. You see from my cursor uh, movement, you can see that, that that is the tube. So you can see, you can you can see. This is a flexible tube. This is flexible tube flexible tube and uh, and uh, this part with blue line so actually this part is support you know this part is a support tube support so with this can this structure you can see uh, on this background is it on this background okay say so tube uh, uh, tube supporter this a uh, tube supporter in green and then okay let me change to change to red and then my you can see my diffuse diffuser tube all the way from you see my diffuser tube all the way they're all diffuser tubes so so this just give you a uh give you a, a, a idea you know how how it uh, configure, how 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 the tubes uh, configured uh, inside the oxygen tank. With this enhanced aeration, actually we are able to double oxygen utilization efficiency. This double later after my explanation, actually I believe you you are convinced. Uh, even you know our oxygen utilization efficiency not only double. Okay. Second one, second one, second advantage is in situ aeration tube replacement. This actually is very important for the industrial partner uh, for for the industrial uh, uh, end users. The time they operate, they maintain it, they do the maintenance. Let's say if conventional, for instance, this uh, uh, conventional uh, uh, disc, uh, this conventional uh, disc uh, uh, diffuser. Let's say if this one break. So how do you do? So you have to empty the tank, and then you you can you can repair or replace this uh, this one with problem. But for us, let's say if you have any tube uh, got problem or leak or break, actually we we do not need to empty the tank, and then we can later uh, we can take the tube out and then put the new tube in. Later, I will show you how to do that. <clears throat> the third one, the third advantage of here is in situ aeration tube flushing. And later, I will also show you, you know, uh, after long time operation, the, uh, the, 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 the sum of uh, tiny pearls on the diffuser, not, no matter it's a conventional or the new one, they may have a certain blockage and how to flash uh, those, those blocked uh, holes and then that is uh, uh, another one uh, we are doing better than disk filter so the first one how do we double the oxygen utilization efficiency here i gave you uh, so so from this screen you can see uh you can see this part this part is a conventional disc air diffuser so let's say uh we let's say we take uh the tank bottom area as a hundred number of just hundred you see so let's say if ideal case all of uh, air diffuser, disc type of air diffuser, they, 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 they are installed 
one after another, you will have this uh, kind of uh, occupation density. And then by calculating the area, actually, let's say if the uh, if the brown color square area, uh, let's say if this one is 100, for instance, and then the disk will occupy only 78.5. So, but in ideal, in, in the real case, in the real case, you can see uh, the, the density of air diffuser installation is, is not one after another. They got uh, the huge gaps. So you can imagine, for, for instance, if you see the, the screen in this case, I, actually, I think they are, they are installation uh, density, maybe only, let's say, 10 to 20%. So let's say if, if, if this was, for instance, if this uh, pack uh, density is twenty percent, you can imagine, you know, you know, this seventy-eight point five. This number you have to, uh, uh, you have to multiply another zero point two. So you can you can imagine, you know, how small it is, you know, this area wise. For us, let's say if we use tube again. We use flexible tube. You, if you you look at uh, this a uh, uh, brown color uh, square part, and then occupied by two tubes, for instance. Now with diameter uh, of this one, actually, if you calculate the surface area of these two tubes together, now this is the formula you're going to use, and then I, I just show you the result. As a result, actually, if brown color square area is 100. And then my two tube will occupy, will, will, will provide the surface, the aeration surface 314. So you can, you can imagine not a huge difference. Let's say if, if we, we call this one 314, and then the conventional 78.5, uh, let's say this one multiplied 0 0.5, for instance, Maybe you know uh, it's uh, it's thirty. So thirty compared to three hundred, the difference is hundred. Uh, the the difference is ten times. In sh in short, the the aeration area with new flexible tube actually you are easily able to increase uh, the diffusion area uh, ten times more than conventional. So after you introduce 10 times more, actually you do not need to use high pressure uh, to, to supply the air. You, you, we, we can use low pressure. And also we do not need to control high oxygen, uh, dissolved oxygen level. We can, we can uh, uh, control the very low uh, dissolved oxygen level. And then we are able to achieve even better effect compared to conventional disk filter. By doing by using this flexible tube uh, air fuel diffuser, in short, we are able to at least uh, double the oxygen utilization efficiency. So, so this small video just shows you how to replace uh, a, diff, a, a four uh, tubes during operation. Actually. Actually, you can, so the operator without empty the tank, operator can just pull the full, the, the, the fourth one and then, and then pull the new one go to the system. So it's, it's, it's very uh, easy. So, okay, let me repeat this one again. So you can see, you know, the, with this support, with this one, we pull out, pull out the the, the the brick one, and then and then the new one. So this is new one, and then new one will go in. New one, this side will go in. From this side will go in, and I go out. So very simple. Actually, 
no difficulty. And then another one is how to flush a tube. You know, some of pores are blocked. So it is also where, because uh, this is flexible tube uh, is not rigid. So that's why, let me replace, uh, that's why let's say if I have two tubes, you close one tube and then all of air will go to another tube. And then we'll get, you will get a little bit higher pressure and then you can flush the, 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 the blocked uh, tubes. So I think it's, it's very easy. Now this is the real installation, how it looks like. You can see the installation of the tube can go straight across the tank. The tank length can be you know, any size. For instance, some of the largest one can go 100 meter. And then you can also see here, uh, the, 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 the tube can go in, in round shape. You know, the tube can go in round shape. Now this is uh, the round shape one. You can see the, the, the example. Okay, and so this is the, the, the you can see, uh, you know, how to replace the aerating tubes. You see that this is the tube, this is the tube, and then this is a, a tube connector. And then operator can just pull the tube from here and then to replace a new tube. Another one to save energy is a uh, enhanced air, uh, enhanced uh, uh, this enhanced uh, sludge circling. So this gives you you know how do we uh, use air lifting technology to replace a sludge recirculation pumps. You know in our system actually we do not we are we we, we are able to you know remove all of recirculation pumps. In other words, you do not need installation of the recirculation pumps. So you do not, if you do not install recirculation pumps, you definitely will save space. You will also not have pipeline. So you save a lot of space. So this, again, this is a, a, a example. You say this uh, left-hand side uh, oxygen uh, oxy tank, and an oxic tank overflow to an oxic tank. And then inside an oxic tank, so we install a air lifting mechanism. So you see the air come from this uh, black tube and then they will create, you know, uh, the tube, the, 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 the flow with air bubble and then the density of this liquid is lower than the, 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 bulk, uh, li the bulk liquid. liquid. So that's why the, the the liquid level go high in, inside the blue inside this blue uh, tube, and then and then the water will flow out to this canal, and then this canal will you know will flow back to oxy tank. So we, we are able to achieve this by doing this. So we save a lot of energy. So 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 easily save, for instance, more than half of energy. So this is a, a, a this is a real case uh, how it uh, works. So you can see the the, the the overflow. Yeah, you see the overflow here. Yeah. And another one is uh, so after we remove the recirculation pump. They still have another place uh, in the conventional biological treatment. People use mechanical mixer. That is the uh, anaerobic tank, anoxic tank, inside tank. Uh, people always use impeller to mix the liquid, mix the, the, the biological, we will to prevent the uh, sedimentation inside the oxy tank. So we, you know, in our technology, we, also, we, do, we do not use uh, impeller, mixing impeller. So we, we do not use this one. So this here, in, in our case, we don't have this. So that's why you see, huh? 
You see this one? We, we, we don't have this one. So to replace this one, we also use a flexible tube. We use air. We use air to do mixing. So we use big air bubble, very big air bubble. And then that air bubble will not, uh, uh, will, will, will have very, very little uh, impact to the uh, oxygen uh, contaminant uh, with, with oxygen content inside the anoxic or anaerobic tanks. Uh, other than that, we also have another technology to. Uh, we also have another technology to. To 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 use air bub air mixing to to use air bubble to do mixing. So this is an example. So this is an example. Yeah, let me yeah. next. Okay, how come this one? Wait. Yeah, yeah. So this example. So let's say it broke broke uh, red color. Uh, this now in the beginning. In the beginning. In this chamber, in the beginning, of this, this chamber, full with liquid, full with air, uh, full, full with liquid, not air, full with liquid. So you continuously introduce air from here. So after that, you can, you see the the, the water level in the, inside this chamber will drop. So once the water level drop to to the lower level here, and then inside this U tube. Inside this U-shaped tube, the liquid will break. So, so the, the, the air will flow out from this U-tube. And then after air flow out, the liquid will refill the tank, uh, this chamber again. So you can imagine, you know, you continuously introduce air here, and then the air will come flow out from this, uh, uh, this outlet not continuously, but uh, you know, pulse in pulse. So this is a again, this is this is a very good technology to utilize air to mix, you know, uh, the liquid inside anoxic or anaerobic, uh, anoxic or anaerobic tanks. So the another next one is uh, settling, slat settling. So we also use a technology we call maybe dynamic uh, settling. So with this one, actually, so the during the the, the sludge uh, uh, settlement uh, inside clarific, the conventional clarifier, actually, in on the bottom of the clarifier, we also use aerating technology. So by using air aerating settling, actually. On, bot, on the bottom on the bottom of the clarifier, you will not see sludge precipitation. So no sludge precipitation. So because they have no sludge precipitation, actually you do not need sludge scraper. Again, this is a mechanical part in the conventional process. So in our in our system, actually we do not need uh, uh, we do not need need this uh, sludge scraper. So Definitely, you will not need to do maintenance in this part. The last one is uh, enhanced uh, dissolved oxygen control. This is also because we have uh, uh, such uh, uh, a very unique, innovative, uh, uh, flexible tube uh, air diffuser. Actually, uh, with our own, you know, uh, intelligent PLC control box. And now we are able to do much, much better DO control. So conventional, if, if conventional uh, uh, wastewater treatment process, you may only have this one, you know, DO sensor, you know, and then give, give, give uh, a signal to VFD and then let, let VFD control the blower. Okay, but for, for us, we have one more box, 
we have one more this box. So with this one, actually, uh, together with our flexible tube diffuser, and now we are to we are able to have a better DO control. So this is a, a typical process. Uh, I think you you can see this is a, a typical you know conventional biological treatment process, uh, anaerobic, anoxic, uh, oxic, and clarifier. So the the different the different uh, from the conventional is we have enhanced, for instance, we have enhanced uh, aeration. We use tube here, enhanced aeration, and then double oxygen utilization efficiency. And then we have enhanced airlifting technology to, to recycle rust. We do not need circulation pump. And then also this side is we use airlifting to recycle uh, the sludge under clarifier. Uh, this is clarifier. You see clarifier uh, 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 on the bottom of the clarifier. So you also can see the uh, flex tube air diffuser here. So, but here the the pulse size, pulse size of diffuser is much much bigger than the pulse size of inside the oxygen tank. And then we also have a uh, uh, DO control. Just like I said, we also have a DO control. Uh, so you, if you look at uh, the whole configuration, we do not use pumps. So it means uh, uh, in the real operation, you only need a team to do maintenance for the air blower. You do not need you know, spend too much time and money for the mechanical, for the mechanical parts such as pumps and the impeller. And then the, the, the clean water will go for further treatment or discharge or further treatment, et cetera, et cetera. So by having this uh, system, actually we are able to maintain the uh, MLSS in oxygen zone close to the level of membrane bioreactor. So this is with conventional process, we are able to do in that way. So in summary, actually, you know, uh, we are able to, let's say if you build a new plant, we are able to compare to typical conventional biological treatment process in terms of uh, uh, space, occup uh, occup occupied space, we are able to, to save 30%. And then if you talk about the investment cost, we are also able to reduce 30%. After you do installation, actually the operating cost compared to conventional operation, we are also able to uh, to save thirty percent. So this thirty percent is just easy for our clients to remember. So actually, we are able to save more, more than thirty percent. For the cases you do plant upgrading, you can also remember this thirty percent improvement uh, in terms of, for instance, civil work. Uh, and then, so if you do conventional, and then, so compared to conventional, our technology can save 30% of civil work. And also, let's say, if you waste the same space, and then our new technology can increase treatment capacity 30%. Again, you know, operation-wise, because you, you know, you don't use pumps, you don't use those things and then we are able to, to save 30% of energy consumption. So how to save space? I just give you an example, how to save space. So the first one is a tank design. So we don't use pipes, we use canal. So flow, 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 flow canal. So that's why you know we do not install pumps. So that's why we we uh, we, we can save space. Another point is uh, uh, enhanced settling process, increase MRS to five to eight gram per liter, and then by doing that, actually you can you can reduce space 
for the same capacity treatment. And then e-settling also double the oxygen, uh, the e-settling can double the capacity. For instance, uh, if you use the same size of the uh, clarifier, same, same size clarifier, you can double the capacity. So again, uh, with our design, actually, with the one configuration, let's say, for instance, if you build your plan in, in, in this way, actually, you are able to uh, uh, you are able to achieve, you know, the operation is the anaerobic, anoxic, oxic sequence, and also by changing the valves, you are able to change to anoxic, anaerobic, oxic, and also you can change to anoxic and oxic, and also you can change to anaerobic, oxic, oh, and uh, uh, an anoxic, oxic, anaerobic, oxic in parallel, oh, you can half the capacity. So for instance, in the beginning, you, in, the, in the very beginning, you know, you just build your new plant, you don't have uh, enough sufficient uh, feed water, and then you actually, you can empty half of your capacity, you're only operating half. For the future, if you have more feed water in, and then you can easily, you know, uh, implement the full capacity. So this is some of installation of the te new technology, the technology in municipal environmental uh, uh, application, and then this is uh, also the same in uh, in, in, muni in municipal wastewater treatment. And then and this is in industrial wastewater treatment for industrial parks for for the centralized uh, wastewater treatment, and then this is for individual industry companies. Uh, if some are big companies, they, they have more a lot of wastewater. And then this is also for some industrial wastewater project. And then this is for those in rural area in the sewage treatment. You know, you can see we do underground. You, you on, on top of the ground, you, you see just you see the green, but you don't see the wastewater treatment plant. And this is same. Before I and my presentation, I'd like to introduce a little bit more, you know, how a casino works. So we serve industry, we focus on serving industry. We, the, our, our, our target is we try to uh, help industry customers to, to, to get more value from, it, from their waste. For instance, we serve in pharmaceutical, in textile dyeing, in whiskers production, in acid alkaline re recycling, in zero liquidity charge for high salt content brand content, uh, uh, treatment, in PTA production, in sugar industry, in power plant, in petrochemical, in pulp paper, we, we serve many using membrane technology. I give you one example in textile and uh, uh, dyeing uh, company. Uh, for instance, in textile and, uh, industry, they have many different uh, things. For instance, sludge reduction, sludge treatment is always very expensive. And then standard discharge, how do you achieve, you know, uh, environmental uh, regulation uh, uh, standard and then to do discharge. And then with uh, water recycle reuse and a feed water treatment and then thermal uh, energy recovery and then and then this is an indigo uh, a, a buying components uh, recycle. And then this is a valuable components PTA recycle. So, and then this alkaline recycle. So actually we are able to, to serve this symbol, uh, the, 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 this uh, textile company, uh, textile industry in, in all of uh, those uh, applications, you know, tree, for now this one, the alkaline recover, recycle, now I put here is one case. And then PTA I put here is uh, uh, another little bit detail. And then indigo is another tree. So uh, so we, because we do this actually, we help our client not only treat with water, but add value to their process. I, I give you uh, uh, another example is uh, our client, our client's client. So the endorsement will be very, very convincing. So now this is uh, uh, our, our client. 
in Malaysia, uh, Ramatex, uh, textile company. Ramatex is the number one uh, dyeing house in Malaysia. And then, and then, but this screen actually come from uh, Nike, come from Nike. Nike globally, Nike got 35 contractor, textile dyeing contractors. So, Ramatex, uh, talking about water efficiency, uh, is number one in these 35 companies. So you can see, you can see from this, you know, you can see Nike, this is Nike uh, water efficiency uh, target. The dot line here is 110 liter per kilogram of fabric. So this is uh, their 2020 target. And then for the individual, okay, column here, is they are running, uh, it's a, they are they are they are running uh, water consumption. You can see, you can see this is in year uh, 2015. You can see, you know, this is a, uh, uh, you can see they have still have some time, uh, some some efforts need to do, and then to reach 110 uh, 110 liter per kilogram of fabrics. And now what uh, our Ramatex have already achieved. Again, you can see the dot line. In average, we are able to achieve almost just 30 liter per kilogram of fabric. So, so that's why you know this uh, 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 in number uh, Ramatex is number one in, in all of 35 their Nike's uh, textile subcontractors. So that's why. And that is also, that's also you know one of very important uh, factors uh, our raw material can get uh, Nike's order. So because after Nike and then they very soon and then they get another big order is a uh, uni glue. So so I I I, I don't have that uh, details, but the fact is that. So with this kind of uh, uh, this. Can this kind of result actually um, our customer very happy you know to work with us and then to to treat the water and then to add value so so we are also more than happy to copy to, to copy our technology to all of uh, potential industrial customers so thank you so much this is my presentation today all right thank you uh, thank you richard for the very extensive presentation so we have a time for some to answer a few questions. So just a quick reminder that if you have uh, any questions, you can go to this site to ask any question that you have. If we do, if we don't have time to answer a question, we I will follow up with you and provide answers for you. So let us look at, at the questions that we have right now. Um, okay, so. The first question, um, Richard, uh, what's the, what is the material made of for the aeration tube? Uh, okay, this uh, is a polyurethane. All right, short and sweet. Polyurethane. Okay. The next one. How, do, how often do you have to replace the aeration tube? Usually they do not need to replace the aeration tubes let's say for instance in a, a range of five years uh, it, this technology just uh, uh, give you give us a uh, sure so the surety because for instance let's say if the time you do installation you may uh, damage some tubes you may not know that and then uh, also you know for some of you know some of uh, uh, unusual cases, and then you need to do replacement. You still have, you still able to do. So, but in our case, if you do proper installation, proper operation, you actually do not need to do re uh, replacement. Okay, uh, this is a good question. So uh, actually, we are 
so so for for in battery uh, applications, uh, you always, it's always okay if you use a high efficiency blower, so your investment is high, and then but uh, you may you know have lower operation cost. Uh, for us, we I think uh, because we already uh, save quite a lot of cost in here and there, and then we always recommend our clients to buy uh, buy a robust and then uh, a good quality of the air blower because we we use only air blower. Okay, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> uh, this one is supposed to 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 be answered not from uh, uh, system integrator, but from authority. But it doesn't matter. I can give. I can share um, my experience. I think uh, in the past, in the history, like especially in recent, maybe I can say five years time, uh, the 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 the. The, the, the China in environmental authorities gave stronger and stronger uh, 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 regulation uh, force to to all of industrial players. Actually, uh, so that's why uh, if you look at the case, uh, the zero liquidity charge is already uh, start uh, a few years already, and also uh, it seems. Uh, for instance, those uh, industries have uh, uh, heavy pollution uh, in the future, in the near future, don't have a uh, good, uh, good uh, technical solution to solve the problems. Likely, you are not able to, uh, you are not able to, to survive in, in China. Uh, for other, some other countries, uh, maybe, you, you know, for those uh, countries still in, in early stage, in the developing country in early stage, uh, they may still able to, to to accept certain you know uh, uh, companies, certain industry processes uh, with a little bit more pollution. Uh, but I don't I, I don't think it's a, a future. So sooner or later, sooner or later they will you know the people that sooner or later they will uh, all of people have to treat their wastewater. And then for instance. Uh, I give you an uh, example in Singapore. So, you look at Singapore. We do not have, uh, for instance, we do not we do not have a textile dyeing company. I think likely it's because because it's other than higher cost manpower cost. Uh, likely, it's the main cost is is you are not able to is is water intensive and uh, process, and also you are not able to treat. Uh, water very safe to very little, uh, very, very effective, in very effective cost, in very stable uh, quality. So, so, so that's why you know people actually the market always need some of technology uh, they are able to do in the industrial way. But for us, uh, again, you know, for those new technologies, other than biological, I say, is it still? Somehow it's very expensive, and somehow it's not stable. So that's why you know, as the majority of the people, no matter how they still use a conventional biological process, but with I believe with our enhanced uh, biological uh, treatment process, and then maybe we can you know if if we have, we have chance to to do some practice in Singapore, you know maybe you know we can help uh, EDB to attract more. Uh, company uh, to do investment in Singapore, and uh, those company maybe use a little bit more water, but we are able to uh, recycle. For instance, like like uh, Ramatex. So actually, you know, Ramatex already achieved 30 liter per cube uh, per kilogram of fabrics. You know, far less than you know Nike's 2020 target. All right, thank thank you, Richard, for a very uh, extensive uh, answer again. So, uh, we, I would like to conclude today's webinar. So, once again, if you have any questions or you would like to contact Richard or me uh, for the webinar, you can 
uh, look for my contact over here. And so thank you for your time and I hope to see you again for the next webinar. Thank you, Richard, and thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you very much.